Hey guys, this is a follow-up on the compressed air hand dryer. Uh, at the end of the last video, I'd uh, made a mention about a strange sort of uh, uh, low-frequency noise it was making. And I th thought it was due to the uh, the, air the air flows as the two jets uh, uh, sort of intersect each other. So, this, so now we're going to try to uh, prove that. What we've got here is a one-watt blue laser shining through a, a lens that came out of an old photocopier. This sort of turns it into a... Uh, a, f a wide beam. Uh, the beam is wide enough that it's not going to burn anything, although I, c I can feel a little bit of heat. And it diverges pretty quickly, so it's not uh, an eye hazard unless you put your eye right in the middle here. Uh, I've got a smoke machine uh, t to send some smoke into the uh, air jet so we can see what's going on, and then we'll record it on the new uh, high-speed camera. The idea with the line is we'll see one uh, basically section of the smoke. We're not going to see the whole uh, the whole area um, is filled with smoke. We only see one bit, so we get a good cross-sectional view of what's going on. And for some reason, the blue laser is coming out like a purplish almost in the camera, just due to how the uh, camera sensor picks it up. Okay, I think we're ready to give this a go. Oh, that's a lot of smoke. Okay, let's see what we've got on the camera here. That comes out nicely. This is recording at about uh, 6,000 frames per second, by the way. Yeah, nice plume of smoke coming in. Oh, there goes the uh, smoke machine again. And eventually, it will, uh, the air will start blowing around. Let's see. There it is. Yeah. And here we go. Oh yeah, you can definitely see the uh, the oscillations going on there. Yeah, really clearly, nice. Let's uh, go back to the start again. Play back a bit slower as well. Please excuse the crudity of the software. I didn't have time to build it to scale or to paint it. Okay, back to the start. Where? Are, there we go. Yeah, play back at uh, 30 frames per second this time. Oh yeah, really clear oscillations there. One sort of jet goes uh, above the other, then goes then goes below and repeats like that. It looks like uh, the jet on the left is a little bit more powerful than the one on the right, probably just due to the machining tolerances. Uh, I had to manually uh, machine these. Uh, after I had done the CNC just to make them, uh, to reduce the air gap, or no, to increase the air gap because it was too small. Yeah, I wouldn't say this uh, oscillation is really a problem, it's just a slight annoyance in terms of the, uh, all the noise it makes. So it's certainly an interesting uh, uh, fluid dynamics uh, situation. So based on the number of frames it takes to uh, go through one oscillation, or in this case I'll measure across 10 oscillations to get a better uh, average, and knowing the camera runs at 6,000 frames per second at this resolution, you get about uh, 210 hertz oscillation frequency. Since this has an easy way to control the uh, air flow rate, let's try this, uh, repeat this experiment at a higher flow rate and a lower flow rate and see if the uh, uh, oscillation frequency or the mode of oscillation is any different. We can also try sweeping the airspeed up from zero and see when the oscillations actually start at. We can also take a look at, uh, if you look at the left side in the high-speed video, how the smoke is being very strongly sucked up in towards the, uh, the uh, powerful jet of air. We can take a look at uh, what's going on there. So first of all, let's just uh, turn up the airflow slowly and see if we can hear when the difference occurs. So I'm just going to move the, uh, the microphone uh, Move the microphone over near this so you can hear better. Don't know if you can hear that, but there seems to be a very low frequency oscillation at this low uh, at this low flow rate. Let's try increasing that now. Yeah, you can definitely start uh, hearing it now. It's going to go up way, way more. De 
definitely changes with uh, uh, flow rate as well. And the oscillation rate increases with flow rate. <laughs> start out the airflow is just uh, starting up at this point there you can just see the oscillation starting now see now it's becoming quite clear and at around this point the uh, oscillation frequency is around 90 Hertz or so I think at this point the uh, frequency will increase pretty quickly because I turned the airflow rate up uh, up quite quickly definitely the oscillations are now uh, very pronounced and I think at this point they're at around 175 Hertz and now the uh, frequency, frequency is increasing quite quickly again you can see the um, the oscillation sort of the amplitude or the amount the uh, jets are going over each other is reducing quite a lot now now it's at around 220 Hertz now it's at almost uh, almost at the valve is almost fully open and as the valve opens uh, Further, the oscillations become, they're not really quite periodic, they're almost, uh, they're becoming chaotic and it's very hard to measure the uh, uh, frequency at this point. As we keep going, the, I think the valve is pretty much fully open now. Yeah, I've tried to look through this and I can't really find any point where the oscillations are, uh, are uh, periodic enough to measure. Yeah they're, they're, yeah, they're too chaotic to measure at this point. On my website, a user named Cadbury suggested that the Dyson Airblade uh, gets around this problem by uh, aiming the nozzles at, at different locations, or not aiming them at the same point. And looking at the patent, uh, a drawing from the patent, this does seem to be the case. I've drawn red arrows that uh, approximate the uh, angle air will come out of the nozzles, and they and definitely one nozzle, uh, the right nozzle is basically pointing straight at the left nozzle, and the left nozzle is pa uh, pointing much farther down. This seems to be a good way of getting around this problem because it will just create a continuous swirling in the center rather than this uh, oscillation. This this change could be made in the hand dryer by uh, remachining the central support block to move one of the nozzles up, basically. Now we'll take a more detailed look at the area where the Bernoulli effect was causing the smoke to get sucked into the high-speed airstream. The Bernoulli effect causes an area of low pressure near any high-speed moving gas. In this case, that uh, Low pressure sucks in more air from the outside, mixes with the jet, and slows it down but increases the airflow volume. This is the same principle used by those uh, super expensive Dyson fans, sort of the ring-shaped ones. They create a high-speed jet of air, and this sort of pulls, the Bernoulli, the Bernoulli effect causes this to pull more air along with it. Before we play this, I just have to point out how beautiful some of this video is just of the smoke moving slowly before the uh, actual event occurs. It's absolutely beautiful. We get an excellent view just at the start there, uh, as those sort of strings of smoke get sucked in. And if you look around uh, at the bottom, when some of the little uh, sort of gaps get sucked into the uh, jet, they're moving it almost uh, inwards towards the jets at about 135 degrees from uh, the the uh, direction the jet's moving. So it's an incredible suction being generated to pull the gas to pull the uh, to pull the gas backwards like that. Okay, let's have a bit of fun. I'm going to drop some water into the uh, airstream. Ah, oh, beautiful! That drop is just destroyed. Let's see, let's see some of the other ones. Oh, this one made it through a little bit.
and that one made it through a little bit as well. And what about this one? It seems to be hitting closer. That one made it through a bit as well. And another. Yeah, it seems the farther they hit, uh, when the air is going slower, they don't uh, sort of vaporize or uh, atomize as much. Well, that was very interesting to see these uh, fluid dynamic effects of the uh, oscillation in this uh, hand dryer. It was also really fun to uh, use this high-speed camera prototype uh, for the first time, for its first uh, real use. And no problems at all so far, no crashes, uh, nothing. It's all been working perfectly. Anyway, hope you found this video interesting. Thanks for watching.